we go. We're going to have a reading now from Matthew 28, beginning to read at verse 1. The words will appear on the screen. You can sit if you like or if you want to. You can stand. We're going to continue in worship shortly. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, do not be afraid for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
finished you were buried in the ground but the grave could not contain you for you were the Must come down. 
was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met you. I was breathing but not alive. For my faith. the significance of Easter Sunday. I'm guessing that almost everybody here knows that Easter Sunday is the day of celebration. It's the special day. But it wasn't that way for the first people who lived through the very first Easter. They didn't come with their Easter eggs ready. They didn't come excited and ready for a party. They came ready for sadness. They came ready for grief. 
they would have come this morning dressed in the kind of clothes they would wear to a funeral. They wouldn't have come excited. They would have come heartbroken. And so I'd like to take you just very briefly through the story of everything that happened in the last week of Jesus. Not everything that happened, because that would actually take too long. But through enough of the things of the week of the very first Easter, for us to reach Easter morning, maybe with a little bit of the same feeling they had in their hearts. So can anybody remember, or does anybody know, what last Sunday was called? Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday, not to do the palms of your hands, but to do the palms of the trees, the palm trees. They took the palm branches, and when Jesus was arriving in Jerusalem, they waved them to celebrate his arrival. Oh my word, that was the most exciting day. I would like somebody to come and help me be a celebrator over here. Annette, would you like to be a celebrator over here? Annette, Annette, come and stand here. That's it. And you're going to be a celebrator. So you're going to wave like this. You're going to be a celebrator. That's it. Good. Just to keep some waving going. Yeah. And um, you can keep going if you want to, but you can also be just celebrating. Yes. So this is last Sunday. There's celebration and excitement. It's not, just, it's not just like celebrating a birthday party or something like that. It's not just celebrating the arrival of a child. It's not like even just celebrating a wedding. They were celebrating the arrival of the king. Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, and it seemed like he was doing all of the things that a king would do. So can somebody come up here, please, and help me and be, just to remember, like be a king. Can anybody do this with their hands? Okay, everyone do this with their hands. I'm going to see who does it best. <laughs> we made eye contact. It was too late. Okay, somebody, somebody come and be king. Someone come and be king. Come on, someone be, come and be king. Yes, Andy, thank you so much. Uh, Andy, that's it. Andy's going to be king. If, you, if your deltoids get tired... Just, you know, get down, you can give them a bit of a massage, because that's, that's quite, it's quite funny doing that for a long time. Okay, so they're celebrating the arrival of the king. This is really exciting. And then Jesus goes to the temple, and he does what the king was supposed to do, and he goes and kicks over the tables. So I need somebody up here who can do this. Yes, yes, Vicky's, Vicky's coming up. And, oh, Vicky's coming up. So you can do that for a bit. And if, you, if your leg gets tired, you know, give it a bit of a rest. Um, we don't want to strain anything on Easter Sunday. So yeah, good. We're going to need some more space. Annette, move down that way a little bit. Move down that way. Andy, move down that way a little bit. Good. Okay, so this is the stuff that's going on. <laughs> so there is this excitement building in Jerusalem. Then Jesus does something really special. Jesus doesn't do something with the huge crowds. He does something with just his friends. He gathers his close followers, he gathers his close followers in together, and he shares with them a special meal. So can somebody come who's gonna, gonna come at Harley? Yes, well done. You can do that, it's a nice and easy one. So Andy's still doing king, but Vicky, you're, you're not doing the kicking, that's it. Okay, just you're just sharing. And this isn't just any old meal, this is this is the, the, the first last supper. This is this is communion, so, he's, so you've got to put some feeling into it. And I know you can. I know you've got the artistic. Go on, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Good. Right. So the story is one of excitement. And this is really special. This, this is a moment when actually I think everybody who was following this story thought that Jesus was going to change everything. They didn't know how it was going to happen. Meanwhile, Jesus, Jesus has been thinking in a different way. He's known what's going to happen on this day. He's known what's going to happen on this day for a long time. Because the people of Israel, some of them loved him, and some of them hated him. Jesus knew that actually he was in a dangerous moment that the leaders of the country had tried to kill him, not just once, not just twice, but several times. And each time he'd, he'd somehow confront them or slip away from them. 
And so Jesus knew that going to Jerusalem, where people welcomed him as a king, where he went to the temple and he kicked over the tables of the money traders, where he shared a special meal with his family and friends, he knew that that was the most dangerous place he could be. Jesus knew what was going to happen in Jerusalem. And overnight here, overnight here, after that special meal, Jesus got arrested in the middle of the night. Can we have somebody who can come and just be in chains? Just someone can come up and be cuffed. There's a few parents saying to the children, go on, you can be cuffed. <laughs> there's, a, there's a parent over there who wants a couple of, oh no, you're going to do it on behalf of your children. I thought you were volunteering them. So Jesus gets, the astonishing twist is that Jesus gets arrested. He doesn't fight back. In fact, he even tells his followers, no, don't fight back. Let this happen. Overnight, in the middle of the night, Jesus is put on trial. People put fake accusations against him. And before anybody even knows what has happened, he's been sentenced to death and taken to the cross. And Jesus doesn't do anything to stop it. At every point, he allows it to happen because he knows this is the most important thing that can happen in the story of all humanity. This is the most important moment. He doesn't come as a king of a conquering army like people were expecting back here. Andy, how are those shoulders doing? Yeah, good, okay. He, he does a symbolic cleaning of the temple. Come on, let's have a kick. Let's have a kick. Come on, do really like kick over a table. That's it. Kick, <laughs> kick it over. Yes. But Jesus has come to show us what the heart of God is. And the heart of God is love and service and surrender. He doesn't come to conquer. He comes to lay down his life for us. There's one guy, there's one guy in particular on the first Good Friday, he gets literally set free, his chains get struck from his hands, and he's allowed to go into freedom, his name was Barabbas, while well, Jesus went to the cross in his place, and that's what Jesus did on Good Friday for all of us. But that day, Good Friday, it would have struck them all flat. I'm just going to say thank you to all of you. I think, I think you've, you've worked hard up here. I think you may all take a place again. Thank you. If, you. if you followed this story along, it is like it comes like zooming along the train track and then it just hits a flat brick wall. The crucifixion of Jesus. To them, it would have been the end of the story. All of this good stuff, all of this excitement, it was suddenly smashed flat. And like, we, we know, we've been singing the songs, we've heard the Bible reading, we know the next bit, but for everybody living through it, it all crashed to a halt here. The Romans were really good at killing people. The Romans probably crucified around about two million people. They knew how to do it, and they knew how to do it well, and they used it to crush everybody. But Jesus surrendered himself to that. So, Good Friday was the most, like, heart-wrenching, gut-busting, horrific surprise. But Easter Sunday, Easter Sunday flips it all on its head. Easter Sunday, today, this day, this day. See, you came here like with a bit of the Easter Sunday spirit in your heart, a bit of the Easter Sunday celebration in your heart. But they arrived. Mary, what's that first verse at the, on, the, on the reading? Mary and the women arrived at the tomb. They went to the tomb, not with their Easter eggs and Easter bunnies and their big pile of chocolate they'd been given. They arrived at the tomb weeping, devastated, heartbroken. Their lives, all of the excitement of the story of the last three years has just been ripped to shreds. And there they are, devastated. 
I don't know if you've ever lost somebody close to you. The devastation of that moment. And I think with the story of Jesus, I think it was multiplied by a thousand. Because Jesus was the, they knew he was the one. They'd seen him heal the sick. They'd seen him heal the blind. They'd seen him raise the dead. They'd seen him feed thousands of people. They'd seen him still the storm. They knew that this isn't how the story went, but it broke them. And they arrived here on the first day of the week broken, devastated. And it's into that devastation, it's into that heartbreak, where God shows us his new life, his new hope. The disciples, the first followers of Jesus, and, and, and the, men, the men, it's most striking in the men, I think, because the men, the men and the women react differently at the, at the, for this whole story. The men, they run and hide away. They're they're cowards. When Jesus is arrested, they scatter. When Jesus is killed, they go and lock themselves away in a room. They bolt the door for fear of the leaders of the country. They're, they're pretty pathetic. But Easter Sunday changes it all. When Easter Sunday comes, those slightly thick-headed men, they see the risen Jesus and the true power of God, the power over sin, the power over death, the power that can set them free. And from that moment on, there is nothing stopping them. From there, if they go out, they could, they could run through a brick wall and smash straight through it. That's a metaphor, not a thing. They are willing to go and stand up in front of kings and share the good news of Jesus, even if it means their death. They live with a new power and life inside them because of this day, Easter Sunday. And it's, it's all a bit confusing on the first day for them. But they are transformed by an encounter with the living, breathing walking, talking, eating God, the risen Jesus. And so you may have arrived here expecting Easter Sunday. You may have arrived here expecting chocolate. But that's not how they encountered the first Easter Sunday. For them, it was an astonishing day. And the story of Jesus is the story of astonishment. For them, and it should be for us too, it doesn't stop with Easter Sunday either. It actually keeps on being astonishing. Do you, do you know, Jesus, he sticks around for a little bit and he draws people in and he talks to them a little bit more and he explains more things to them, which is, I love the, I love the bit that comes after Easter. It's like all the things they've kind of had the wrong way up, Jesus explains to them. But then Jesus doesn't stick around and just boss them around and tell them what to do. Jesus says no. There's something new and astonishing that you hadn't expected to happen either. I'm going to leave you to it. But I'm going to fill you with my life. I'm going to fill you with my breath. He'd shared a meal with them. Harley came up and he just stood here, just sharing. Jesus shared bread and wine with them to symbolize his own life, his body, his own blood, filling them. And he shared another image of filling them with his breath. He breathed on them and said, receive my breath, receive my spirit, the very heart of me. And so the astonishing thing is that here and now, we can still receive the breath of the risen Lord Jesus, the power of the life, the same power that conquered the grave, can live in us. Here in this world that is sometimes grey and sometimes frustrating and sometimes boring and sometimes drab and sometimes miserable, here in the middle of this world, 
in the middle of bureaucracy, in the middle of form filling, in the middle of exams, in the middle of having to get up and get dressed in your uniform to go to school, in the middle of, in the middle of funerals, in the middle of grief, Jesus can come and breathe his life into us anew. So I'm going to close this section with a, with a prayer. Just, you, might, you might want to breathe and just remind yourself of Jesus' promise, Jesus' promise to breathe his life into us. So just breathe in. Lord God, may you come again afresh and breathe your new life into us. Lord, breathe your Easter surprise into us. I think God might be just stirring a new joy in some people. You might be feeling like there's something like a weight has been on you and it's been lifted off. Just receive God's joy. You might have been expecting something different. But God is saying to you, what I have for you is better. And if that's you, just like the first disciples, you need to trust. And there are some other people here who are just saying, I don't know how to change. And Jesus is saying to you that you do not need to do the work. He will come in. Just welcome him in. new life, new power, new hope. Surprising new life. Surprising new power. Alive in you today. Lord, thank you for all that you give. Lord, thank you for the gift of Easter. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to continue using one of the, the ways that Jesus talked about sharing his life with his followers, which is when we're going to share communion together. And as we do this, we're going to say a prayer. And then we're going to have a couple of stations distributing communion. We'll have one here. We'll have one over there. Can I just ask, is there anybody here who is gluten-free, who needs a gluten-free wafer? No, it's always good to check. Good. Um, this, is, this is the Church of England, and as such, what we do in the Church of England is we say that, that actually anybody who is a, a baptized believer in Jesus is welcome to come and receive communion. Um, this, isn't, this isn't an exclusive church. If, if you are a practicing believer and you are used to receiving communion in your home church, you are very welcome to receive here too. I'm just going to count everybody very quickly. I think I need to get some more wafers. 
She told me, Annette. one other thing I'd like to do before we celebrate communion, which is, this place is full of symbols, this place is full of things with meaning. One of the things we have is, is our Easter candle. Is there anybody who'd like to light the Easter candle today? You'd like to do it? Yeah? Cool. Come on up. Which one are you? I want to say Callum, but I'm, I'm probably wrong. Nathan, oh Nathan, right, okay, this is, going to be, this is going to be exciting, oh my word, this is going to be brilliant, is he safe on a chair? No, that's still not going to be enough, is it? Let's bring the candle to you, let's bring the candle to you, okay, I'm going to light this, right, and you're not going to light me, I'm going to bring the candle down, you hold that carefully, I'm going to bring this to you, because, uh, here we go, don't, don't light the flowers either, because they're plastic, here we go, I'll come down. Oh, no, that's it, that's it, yes, 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 yeah. Oh, is it go it's going, brilliant. Right, you're gonna blow that one out. Brilliant. Lord, thank you for your light that shines bright on this Easter Sunday. Shine bright in our hearts today, in Jesus' name. Amen. We continue with the words on the screen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread. And he gave you thanks and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord, holy is the Lord God Almighty. 
As our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Body and blood of Jesus given for you. The body and blood of Jesus given for you. Right. Yes, please. Hello. stars they were left the morning sun was dead the savior of the world was fallen his body on the cross his blood poured out for us the weight of every curse upon him
sing hallelujah the lamb has overcome we sing hallelujah we sing hallelujah we sing hallelujah the lamb has overcome we sing hallelujah We're going to pause uh, in our worship for notices. Angelina, I think you've got a notice. And if anybody else has a notice, would you please like to queue behind Angelina politely? Happy Easter. I would like to remind you there will be a spiritual revival prayer meeting on 29th april 3 p.m reverend dr joe Corium will be preaching i believe you will be renewed in a spirit and strengthened by the word of god if you are free please come with your family friends neighbor grandparents we welcome you thank you Shall we pray? Let's just pause. Lord, thank you for the gift of your son. Lord, teach us as day leads to day the full meaning of the gift that Jesus has given us. May the power of Christ live in us and breathe in us and flow from us that we may share your light in this world. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand and continue in worship.
stood in awe. Though the souls of all who come to the Father are restored, and the church of Christ was born, then the Spirit lived the
want to get up and dance with this one, feel free. Thank you very much. Uh, one practical matter to do, which I'm going to lead into a blessing afterwards with. This is announcing the bands of marriage between a couple who live in the parish. I published the bands of marriage between Simon Patrick McIntyre, single of this parish, and Esme Alice Moss, single of this parish. If any of you know any reason, uh, sorry, this is the second time of asking. If any of you know any reason in law why they may not marry each other, you are to declare it. I'm going to pray for them, and I'm going to pray for us. Lord, may your new life live in Simon and Esme. Lord, may your resurrection power live in them. And Lord, may your resurrection power live in us. Lord, as we go out into the spring, into the sunlight, into the season of flowers and new life and new hope, Lord, may your resurrection power fill us, flow through us, transform us. 
And Lord, we do not know what surprises will come our way. But Lord, we know that your life will be in us when we face all of them. Some of you might have felt earlier on that you just felt like a stirring of a flame inside you. Let that fame, flame be fanned into a roaring furnace. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and those you love this day and forevermore. Amen. And may you go and have a great, fantastic Easter celebration. May there be no shocking surprises today. Thank you to the band for the, for the joyful worship, for the tech team as well. May you go in peace and joy and hope to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. But there's a cup of tea and coffee out there, and there might even be some cake cake and what, what are you saying Ruth? I know what you're saying the prayer team will be up here at the front so if anybody's felt moved if they touch God touched by God if there's anything that you want prayer for or prayer with our prayer team please come they will be up here at the front of church bless you all and happy Easter that was brilliant well done, band.